That morning revolved around an unnatural, sharp, stinging pain in my leg. I tossed and turned in bed, tangled in my sheets, but I could not get the cramp to fade. Stumbling from my rusty, discomforting mattress, I assumed it was. I assumed this great agony would be easy to soon discard. I disregarded it as nothing more than a terrible ache. Perhaps I slept the wrong way and applied too much pressure on my leg. Exhausted, I crept to my closet and prepared to get dressed for work. The first unfamiliar sight appeared when I rolled my sock over my ankle. I felt a swift, unexpected bump greet the back of my thumb. I attempted to turn my ankle to get a better look at what caused it, and I noticed a round circular bump, no larger than a quarter resting on the back of my leg. Though deformed skin seemed to be most viable explaining the agony that I earlier faced, I assured it must be nothing more than an inflamed bug bite. Throughout the day at work, the only accentuated details I can recall are the discomfort the sore on my leg caused me. I consistently felt a sharp throbbing, sometimes a sharper pain than before, but it only grew more and more noticeable, surprisingly unlike a most bug mites. This irritation had no itchiness. I felt no need to scratch it the entire day. When I pulled my sock off after getting home, I noticed that the skin surrounding my ankle had become discolored, and the bump had presided to my on my ankle had grown to almost double the previous size. I had trouble shutting my eyelids as I rested in bed that evening. I didn't move due to the agony that arose from doing so. I just lay in bed unable to close my eyes and unable to move. I vividly recall seeing the clock on my bedside table reach four in the morning before I finally fell into slumber. The alarm, my alarm woke me that morning. All I remember is how much I wish it didn't. At that moment I prayed it hadn't. I prayed I was still sleeping. I wish that every second of that moment was nothing but a fragment of my imagination. I soon, I could soon disregard, but it wasn't. As my blaring alarm echoed through my room, my discontent at a little sleep was the most minor of my issues. I turned my head to recognize copies of the bumps on my ankle and compassing my arms. I lifted my shirt. The bumps were too many to count. As I peeled off my sheets and blankets, I gazed laid upon legs that were now inflamed with the bumps similar to those from the day before. I felt these painful irritations. I knew at that moment they weren't bug bites. Something much more peculiar was happening. I pressed my finger onto these mounds of my flesh. Unlike the hard solid texture of a bug bite, these sores were squishy and almost felt as if they were air pockets on my skin. Regardless of the odd texture, pain shocked through my body. Then I pressed these irritated selections on my body. At this point, I had the decision of, to skip work. I easily could have called in sick and drove to the hospital to get my situation checked out. That would have been the smart decision. A great decision at that. I wish I would have made that decision, but I didn't. I thought my thought process could continue to make the worst choices. I had a chance to obtain a promotion due to my diligence and effort. I wasn't going to let some simple bump stand in my way. I had an obligation to prove to my company, sick or not, I would be reliable. So I went to work. On the car drive over, the pain only sharpened and worsened. All these inflammations pumped more and more agony into my body. I barely had the ability to drive and escaped near-death collisions several times on my way to work. 
during the work day I experienced the worst performance of Spain in a span of my career. I had to lead a meeting and present a newly found chart of the company's statistics. I was forced to leave in the middle of my presentation due to those damn bumps. I fled to the bathroom only to discover them spewing an unbelievable amount of pus. It was a thickly vicious yellow substance that reeked in scent. I grabbed the paper towels in an attempt to contain this expulsive, explosive fluid. Unfortunately, the wounds only gushed more and more out of plasma, of its plasma out. I was riveting by this occurrence. I wondered what was happening to me. In a matter of days, I had transformed from a normal, simple, bland man to where now I lay sobbing in the bathroom floor, unable to plunge this viewing mess out of from my body. I knew that th at this moment, I would have to act on whatever was going on. I had a sudden change of mood. When I stood up from the floor, I felt rather weary and lightheaded. As my gaze shifted from my toes, I noticed the goo that flooded the bathroom floor. The substance that my body expelled now covered the floor in a mask of slimy, sticky presence. Bright yellow. It looked unnatural to be originating from my own body. I decided to the general staff would be suited to wipe the sticky mess I created. I opened the door from the bathroom and began to walk from my, to my boss's room. I explained the events leading up to today. However, before arriving at his door, I received bewildering expressions from my co-workers. They kept their gaze fixated on me in awe. I halted and swiftly rotated my head around to the room, hastily scanning my faces. And with an inflection of slight anger, I let out a shout asking, WHAT? The only response I received was a more discomforting silence than before. I then peered in the same direction as the others and myself. I became alarmed to discover the obscure sight that they were viewing. Unknowingly, I was drenched in the guck that came from my own body. The plasma was a dark hue of yellow now, and it seemed to be thicker than blood. I now shared a fearful expression of the rest of the room and fled to my car. I had no care for traffic, no way for other cars on the road. The only issue I now, I know, let eat up my mind as these irritated patches on my skin. I arrived at the hospital shortly and stumbled in, nearly passing out with little energy. I arrived at the front desk. They made me fill out routine paperwork and assured me I would see a doctor soon. I walked in the room taking my time to expect the bumps. Covered in the substance, I became rather suspicious they had not directed me to the emergency room, but I realized if they noticed my ability to function, they must have thought my appointment soon, their appointments would be best. The doctor arrived for a brief wait, took me to a room in the back. As we sat, he asked me the usual questions, what they would be in any appointment, then proceeded to inspect the bumps in my body. I felt disheartened as I looked at his face. I could see the emotion of uncertainty and confusion as he lifted his eyebrows and his eyes seemed filled with discomfort. He then looked up at me after expecting wounds and asked, do you have a bug problem? I replied, no sir, not to my knowledge. He then gave me a dis disappointed look and spoke. Well, the nature of these sores appears to be similar to those of a tumor. However, that wouldn't explain the spewing of pus. I replied worried. A tumor? Are you suggesting I have cancer? He chuckled a bit and spoke. No, no, I am certain you don't have cancer. My guess is that you I just irritated Chris. We should be fine for a week or two. I'd say no work until they use this hill. I was reluctant to skip work, but I myself couldn't disagree with the statement, especially due to all the pain the consumers caused. I headed back to my house that evening and thought it may have been 
best to try to comfort myself, to indulge in luxuriously activities. I rested in bed that evening feeling more relaxed than the previous night. I almost fell asleep that evening. I almost did. In fact, I wish I had. But as soon... But I soon would realize one of these most terrifying moments of my life. The following memory was so unnerving and so repulsive, I can recall each and every detail as if it, I was, as if it were the present. Before closing my eyes, the door slowly creaked open. I assumed it must have been nothing more than the house settling, but of course, by instinct, would check anyways. It wasn't just the house moving, the door would have been moving by something, by someone. I look, I look now, no further than the couple of feet from my bed, soon the abstract figure in the doorway stood an abstract figure in the doorway. He slowly approached me, appearing to be quite large in size. I had no ability to move, no shock overpowered. A shock overpowered my nerves. By the time he stood at the foot of my bed, he carried a bag with him. It seemed quite valuable in his possession. He dropped it to the floor, whistled. He was next to me. I couldn't move. I couldn't mute the unsettling sound of his breath. He inhaled each breath with a rattling, resounding noise. In and out, his breath disturbed me. It only seemed to grow louder and more noticeable. As he rummaged through his bag, I noticed a few of its holes in his case. He turned quickly, holding what looked to be a needle in his hand. I swallowed my fear and hoped for the best. He looked over me, scanning my body as if he was analyzing me. I trembled slightly, yet I still believe he had no clue I was awake. He then shifted my ga his gaze to my neck and slowly began pricking it with his fingers. I could barely feel them, however. In just an instant, he inserted the nail into my flesh and through the neck. Surprisingly, I felt no pain, no sharp jolt, no prick quick. Nothing at all. I soon was filled with an unsettling feeling as I noticed something rather peculiar. He had not just put the needle into my neck. He had in fact shot, put a shot into my neck. He filled it with something, some unknown substance. He continued his work on several areas of my body, then left. After I was sure he was absent from my house, I lifted my hands in fear. I sluggishly lifted my hand along my chest to my neck to let my fingers drift in an open air before meeting the new bump on my neck. I felt it, and I felt disheartened to find it was no different from the rest that masked my body. I still had little knowledge, and my mind was rather curious. I had no intention as to what, why that man broke into my house in the middle of the evening and filled me with some solution to his to his I returned to sleep shortly after unable to stay awake in speculation when I woke in the morning I was sure what I had seen was a mere nightmare something in my mind had created an explanation for the recent tumors I soon discovered evidence to suggest otherwise it appeared the man who had crept into my room the evening before I had left a paper behind. I was curious as to what it was and tried my best to unfold the letter. It was taped in several areas and folded in a miniature square. Unraveling the sheet, I was greeted with a repulsive and disheartened discovery. I found a valid explanation to my recent bumps finally. However, this was rather an unfavorable one. What I had looked at this seemed to be nothing more than an instruction manual. When looking further, it was a revolting manual as some sick and twisted ritual. It guided a man to where to insert the needle to assure I would feel I wouldn't feel a thing. The most disturbing issue of it was all was as I read further into what I found. 
that he what he was inserting into my skin. He had created some odd solution that was called host. At the bottom of the manual, it had labels for all the following objects and entities of the diagrams. His solution was titled Arachnid Soviet T14, and the diagram depicted me being the host of some sort of mutant spider colony he was attempting to create. I looked as if he was trying to create some sort of biology altering spider species and he was using humans as his test subjects to create these spiders. I flipped over the sheet to find the truth even more discomforting. It had been titled Arachnid Soviet T-13. It expressed an image of the Soviet host experiencing side effects and dizziness, vomiting, nausea, and fatigue. It's strangely enough prevent to prevent weeks that had come down with what I thought was the flu. I felt disturbed at this point, and I wondered what exactly I had been chosen for testing. I didn't sleep at all that night. I didn't sleep well the entire week. Currently, I lay in bed and my door bolted shut. My windows closed, covering covered my wood boards. I nailed into the walls, my body smothered in layers of clothing. I doubt this will stop them or even slow them in the process said that I realize there isn't much to do to stop him. All I can really do is hope he will never get this serum right. The good news is Soviet T-14 didn't work out so well. In fact, neither did T-15 or 16. But I can say for one thing, for certain, he's only getting more and more clever at fixing the kinks. It's only a matter of time until he gets it right. Thank you.